New this morning on your fast track to seven, a man from the Northern Valley is in a Fargo hospital with serious injuries after rolling his van. The Minnesota State Patrol says 36 year old Kyle Larson of Thief River Falls went off Highway 59 near Erskine yesterday and rolled several times. Troopers say he was not wearing a seatbelt and is fighting life threatening injuries after being blown to Sanford in Fargo. The State Patrol says the crash happened on an icy, snowy road. A reminder to be cautious. As we head right on over, oh no, just kidding. We're going to check some travel maps for you in just a few minutes. But first, we're checking in with meteorologist Lisa Green. Hey, good morning on this first alert weather day. We've got blowing snow being our biggest issue here for today. Some light snow falling, but it's that wind that's picking up any snow that we've accumulated over the last week. And then on top of that, any snow that's falling. So visibility is going to be down. We may have some drifting on the roadways that leads to more slick spots, or you might run into one of those drifts happening here this morning and into the afternoon as well. A look at your radar right now. We have some areas of light snow, some in Fargo and in Grand Forks as we speak. That's getting blown around by winds that have already been picking up. A look at our current temperatures as well. You can see that we are looking at numbers into the teens to some 20s, but wind chills are low in Devil's Lake. It feels like we're at one degree right now. Fargo a wind chill of nine and a wind chill of eight in Thief River Falls currently. So Wind chills are going to be tough, but it's the wind that will be the toughest factor itself because of that low visibility it causes. Not so bad in the northeast. One thing I want to point out, though, it's not detected on the radar very well. It's pretty far away from the radar site, but downwind from Lake of the Woods, more heavy snow possible for today. You could get several inches there, whereas the rest of the valley is in that one inch range or so. And check out our wind gusts already picking up into some 20s out of the northwest. In the north, Jamestown Oaks not showing right now, but we have had some gusts in the 30s there. And Fargo only at 14 miles per hour, so it just kind of gets worse from here on out. So morning commute tough, but the afternoon and evening commute could end up being quite more or more tough or uh, conditions may get a little bit more dicey during that time, especially once that sun sets again for tonight. We'll have that strong wind, the blowing snow, and it's always a little tougher to see at night with that blowing snow combo. And then heading into the day tomorrow, we're going to be pretty cold in the morning to start, and we may see another round of this into tomorrow. So just want to give you that heads up on your Friday evening. Watch out for more wind and more snow falling this weekend. Cold to follow, but we recover. We head back into some 20s to even some 30s by the time we get toward Thanksgiving. So improve it just in time for the holiday week. The next few days could be kind of tough here and it might be kind of sneaky too. Just want to give you that heads up because it might look OK in town. But then once you head out of town, you run into those bouts of blowing snow. So just keep that in mind uh, with your travel plans here today and through tonight. Okay, cold, blowing snow and high winds. Thank you for that update, Lisa. Now let's head right on over to Jordan for a real time look at our travel this morning. Yeah, we have a lot to go over this morning. As Lisa was saying, first alert weather day travel could be a little bit tricky out there. Uh, taking a look at our interstate cutting through North Dakota, I-94. We are talking about either fully ice covered in parts like around Valley City. We're seeing fully ice covered there to partially ice covered. That extends the rest of the state. So west of Valley City all the way to the Montana border and then east of Valley City heading to the metro in our metro here the interchange of the two interstates is also icy just north and south of that. We're talking about snow covered interstate there for 29. Then as we take I 29 heading up north to the Northern Valley through Grand Forks, ice covered there as well. So be careful. Then as we get around the Devil's Lake Basin area this morning, we're talking about partially snow covered that goes up to the Canadian border. And then as we look south of I 94, those counties are dealing with partially ice covered to partially snow covered, kind of a mix there depending on where you are. Uh, I-29 heading south through Richland County is seen fully snow covered, partially ice covered and partially snow covered depending on where you are in that county. So you need to make sure you're watching out on our Minnesota side of things. Basically every single road that we are watching here is either partially to fully covered with snow. Looks like we have two incidents that are even popping up on our map right here. I just want to zoom in and find out what is going on. We have a vehicle that has spun out just north of Winger, Minnesota this morning, so something to be careful on in that neck of the woods and there's even another crash that happened close to that. Let's zoom back out here so we can see the rest of our area now this morning. We're also getting word that the interstate I-94 is having some issues here this morning. Ooh, we have eight incidents that are currently happening around the Ashby Barrett area just past Elbow Lake and uh, northwest of Alexandria. 
eight total different crashes on the interstate in that area right now. So we need to be careful uh, as we look at our interstate closer to the metro, though partially uh, snow covered. And then as we look at Highway 75 heading south of um, the metro as well, we're looking at fully snow covered there. Highway 10 fully covered all the way from Moorhead to Wadena. So no matter where you are, be careful on the roads this morning. Ashlyn. Yeah, a lot to be uh, mindful of. Thank you for that closer look. New this morning, one man facing several charges after police say he broke into a home in northern North Dakota. Rillette County Sheriff's deputies were called for a burglary yesterday and found two people rummaging through a house. They arrested Jason LaRock for burglary, theft of property, and hindering law enforcement. One woman was also arrested but has not yet been formally charged. A man is in jail accused in a stabbing at a northern Minnesota bar. 35-year-old Anthony Gant is charged with assault causing great bodily harm. Now police believe he stabbed a man inside the Izzy's Lounge and Grill on Saturday after the two exchanged words. No word on information released on that victim's condition. And we're jumping outside now for a live look from downtown Fargo. Demolition underway currently about to begin right around 7 o'clock this morning. This is the Fargo Moorhead Community Theater site. It's on the east side of Island Park. The wrecking ball and bulldozer moved in Tuesday and is taking down the 55 year old building that shut down suddenly. It was three years ago when roof beams in the ceiling failed during a performance. Fargo Parks officials are clearing that site. No word yet on what will go in the spot. One idea that's being thrown around is an outdoor venue. But some cold work for those folks out there this yeah, morning. Absolutely. Hopefully they're bundled up and hey, hopefully you guys at home are as well. Stay safe. We just had a lot of those incidents pop up, so thank you for a real time look at that. Take care, everybody. See you tomorrow.